Hello everyone, welcome to my course and in this video, I will show you how to configure firewall rules inside the Azure. So for that, go to portal portal.azure.com and let's create new fresh server. And let me create a resource group, DB security. Give the server name firewall. I am okay with the East US. Give the username and password. Review and create. Deployment, deployment is started. Let's wait. Meanwhile, let's understand a firewall rule configuration so now in the azure sql we have two level of firewall configuration database level firewall rule and server level firewall rule now let's take an example you are getting a request from internet or azure services and your server first check is there any database level firewall rule is configured if yes, then directly access the database. If no, then check is there any server level firewall rule configure. If yes, then it's allowed to access all the databases inside this server. If no, then terminate the connection. Now this firewall rule configuration is very simple concept and Microsoft is always recommend go with the database level firewall rule configuration whenever possible and use the server level firewall rule configuration for the administrative purpose go to the portal again so deployment is completed go to resource and here inside the firewall demo i am going to create two databases db1 and db2 so let's create the databases so go to overview create database db db1 go with the basic apply go with the local redundant backup storage additional setting sample review and create <coughs> so deployment is started in the second window i am going to create db2 So deployment is started. Let's wait for two to three minutes. So deployment is completed. Go to resource and go to the server. Now inside this server, I am having two databases DB1 and DB2. Let's connect the server first. So copy the server name, open the SSMS, give the server name, username and password. Now, while connecting your server, you are getting alert please read this alert carefully so your client ip address does not have access to the, to the server signing to the azure portal and create new firewall rules to enable the access now whenever you create any database or a server in azure by default there will be no firewall rule configuration so by default, there is no firewall rule configuration.
Now inside this database DB1 set server firewall rule this is a server level firewall rule. Now right now I am I'm not able to access the server because there is no firewall rule configured here. Now let me configure the firewall rule. So here either you can give your IP address or you can give the range of IP address. Let me give both. So first I am going to add my IP address. Now let me uh, let me try to connect and let me take the IP address range. So my IP address range is 2.2.2.2.136. Two, two so So here I am adding my IP address as well as I am adding my IP address range. Both can work. Click the save button. Click OK. Now firewall rule successfully updated. Let me try again. Yes. Now I am able to access my server. Now inside the database folder, I am having two databases db1 and db2. And I am able to access both the database because we have configured server level, server level firewall rules. It means that inside the server, I am able to access all the databases once you configured the server level firewall rules. Now this server level firewall rules configured inside the master database. Let's quickly check. So select star from sys dot firewall underscore rules. Now here you can see So we have client IP address as well as we have IP address range. So this is all about server level firewall rules. Now let's create a database level firewall rules. Now to configure the database level firewall rules, you do not have any option in Azure portal. You have to configure database level firewall rules using SQL script. So let me copy the SQL script and I am going to select DB1 because, because it's a database level firewall rules. So I am inside the DB1 and let me run first select query so select star from sys dot database underscore firewall underscore rules so right now i do not have any database level firewall rules let me configure database level firewall rules so for that we have for that we have one procedure sp set firewall rules give the name my ip address copy the ip address and execute it. Oh, sorry. SP set Yes. So for the database layer firewall rules, the procedure name is SP underscore set underscore database underscore firewall underscore rules. Now let me run a book query. Now here you can see I have added my IP address for this DB1 database. Now let's validate. For that I want to remove first server level firewall rules. So go to the server. Inside the server go to the firewall rules. And here I am going to remove my server level configuration. 
click save so now the there is no firewall rule configuration inside the server level now let me try to connect my database from ssms so go to database give the give your credential and click connect now here you can see you are getting alert your client IP address does not have access to the server signing to the Azure account and create new firewall rules because I have removed all the firewall configuration from my server level. So and by default the server is connecting to the master database. So now how we can connect it for that click cancel go to the option and select database name so db1 and click connect now you can see i am able to access my server go to the databases and here you can see only db1 is visible now inside my server i have two databases right db1 and db2 but here i am i am able to access only db1 also db2 is not visible here Let's say if you want to delete the database level firewall rule, then just set sp delete database underscore firewall underscore rule and give the name. So using this procedure, you can also delete the database level firewall rule configuration. So now I hope you will understand how the database level firewall rule works. Please practice. See you in the next video. Hello everyone, welcome to my course and in this video, I will show you what is a use of allow Azure services and resource to access this server and how to configure the virtual network. Now let's take an example. You have virtual machine inside the Azure and you have SQL Server database. Now you want to access this database from this VM. By default, it's not allow if this property is no. So let's understand this property. This under, this property means if you set yes, it means that it will allow all the Azure services to access this database. Now here, Azure services means virtual machine or data factory or data lake or data brick or data sync in Azure. So Microsoft recommend by default, it should be no. So by default, this property is no. And still you want to access your database from this virtual machine. Then you have two options. First, whenever you create any virtual machine in the background, it will create virtual network. And you can configure your virtual network inside this configuration. So here you have to click add existing virtual network and select your virtual network. Right now I do not have any virtual network, but if you have a VM in your organization, you can directly select your virtual network and click OK. The second option is you can directly add your virtual machine IP address inside this and you can access database from this virtual machine. Similarly, if you have any Azure services, let's take an example of data sync services or any, any Azure services, you have IP address and that IP address, if you configure here, it will automatically allow. So now I hope you will understand how this property and how this property will work. See you in the next video.